Hi everyone, I'm Ben from the Merrimack Public Library and this is If You Know You Know Kitchen Survival. Today I'm going to be showing you the basics of how to make sushi rolls. Uh, these are great to have in summer because they taste really clean and refreshing, they're nice and simple to make, and you don't have to do a lot of cooking on the stove top or in the oven, you just need to cook some rice um, so it doesn't get your house all hot, which is really nice this time of year. Um, and if you aren't a fan or are a little nervous about trying raw fish, I'm going to be sharing, focusing on recipes that don't have any raw fish in them. Or if you wanted to try doing it with raw fish, um, you can also really easily adapt everything I'm going to show you. So uh, with all that out of the way, let's get down to it. So the first thing we're going to need to do for our sushi is prep some rice. Um, this is going to be very similar to our uh, rice balls procedure with just a couple of little tweaks, so I'm going to kind of cruise through it quickly. Um, but before we get to that, just as a reminder, if you're going to be making sushi with your rice, you want to either get short grain rice or sometimes it's sold as sushi rice. Okay, so to review our rice method, which is pretty much the same as in the rice ball video, we're going to start with one cup of short grain rice and wash it by covering with water and then dumping the water out. Swirl the rice with your fingers to help remove debris and some of the excess starch. Repeat two to three times until the water is clearer, but not completely clear since some starch will help hold our sushi rolls together. Once the water is mostly clear, pour rice into a strainer and let drip dry. Transfer your rice to a pot and cover it with an equal amount of water, in this case one cup. Normally you use a bit more water than rice, like one and a quarter cups, but for sushi you can use one to one. Let the rice sit in the water for 30 minutes to absorb some of the moisture. I think I got this wrong in the rice ball video. You want to let the rice soak in the same water that you're cooking it in. Once 30 minutes have passed, put the lid on your pot and heat over medium until boiling. Once the water boils, reduce the heat to low and cook for an additional 12 to 13 minutes until the water is absorbed. Then turn off the heat and let the rice sit with the lid on for another 10 minutes. So um, something a lot of folks in the U.S. don't know about sushi is the word sushi doesn't actually have anything to do with raw fish. Um, it actually comes from the use of uh, vinegared rice. So uh, we're going to prepare some sushi vinegar to go with uh, our rice while we're waiting for the rice to finish uh, absorbing some water. Um, you can also buy sushi rice uh, at a, an Asian market, perhaps, or the Asian section of your uh, grocery store, uh, but I couldn't find any, and it's pretty easy to make um, with a little rice vinegar and a couple of other ingredients. So uh, we're going to start with two tablespoons of rice vinegar. Followed by one tablespoon of sugar. And a half teaspoon of kosher salt. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, but we got to dissolve this together. So. So now we're just going to heat this on the stove really quick until everything dissolves. And I made a little bit more, a little bit of extra, so I'm probably not going to use quite all of this for my uh, sushi. And as soon as all the crystals are dissolved, you can take this off the heat and set it aside to cool. So while our rice is finishing cooking, we can start with our fillings. And the first kind of uh, sushi roll we're going to work on is a spicy tuna roll using uh, a can of tuna instead of raw. So um, I've got my can of tuna here. I've got uh, chopped or uh, chunked. You can use whole if you want. It's not going to make too big of a difference. Uh, we're going to need some mayonnaise, some more rice vinegar, um, some more sugar, and uh, sriracha or an equivalent uh, hot sauce or chili sauce that you like. And to start things off, I'm gonna make some spicy mayo to go with this. So I'm going to take three tablespoons of mayonnaise. Right, three. And combine with one and a half uh, teaspoons of rice vinegar three of these little half teaspoons two three and one half teaspoon 
of sugar or even like a little bit less. There we go. And this is to sort of, looks like I'm kind of clumped up there. This is to approximate uh, Japanese mayonnaise or QP mayo as it's called. Um, so if you can get that from like an Asian market or something and you have some of that around, you can just skip all of this and go straight to, we're going to put in one tablespoon of sriracha or your preferred hot sauce or chili sauce. If you, you know, if you like the way that it tastes, you're probably going to like the spicy mayo that you'd get out of it. And you can adjust this to your taste, but so the general, if you've got QP mayo, it's three to one uh, more mayonnaise to hot sauce. And you can mix this up. I always give it a little taste for seasoning. Mm -hmm. It tastes pretty much like spicy mayo. All right, so I've got my can of uh, tuna here. And I'm just going to, like you would with uh, tuna salad, I'm going to add some of my spicy mayo in the mix until I've got sort of a tuna salad consistency. And of course, if you don't like uh, spicy tuna rolls, you could just use regular mayo at this step um, and make like a tuna salad sushi roll instead. Once that seems like it's got the right uh, texture. Uh, you can optionally throw in a little bit of sesame seeds or even some sesame seed oil. You can add a little bit of sesame oil too. The result this is pretty strong. as spicy as you'd like your tuna to be, you can also add a little just straight sriracha or whatever chili or hot sauce you're using. If you've got the flavor where you want it, well, you're all good. Oh yeah, and a little bit of salt and pepper you good too. And if you want to add a little more flavor um, or some oniony flavor to your uh, spicy tuna roll, you can also thinly slice some scallions. And toss some of them in there too. And our second type of sushi roll we're going to work on today is a kapamaki or uh, cucumber roll named for the kappa, which is a kind of Japanese river spirit that sometimes attacks unwary people, um, which are said to really like cucumbers for some reason. So this is uh, a kapamaki or cucumber roll. So we're going to start by just trimming the ends off of our cucumber and then slice down the middle. Again, lengthwise, and to get a nice thin strip that we can put into our sushi roll easily, we're going to go one more time in half, right like that. And then, if you like, you can trim off the seed part and just leave the sort of main cucumber flesh. I'm not entirely sure if I would taste the difference, but give it a shot. And we're looking for these nice, long, thin strips that'll be easy to roll up into our sushi. So one more time, we're gonna just split this guy into two. And take off the seeds. split this into half again. A nice thin strip of cucumber and that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, 
So once our rice is done, we can spread it out onto a big uh, platter or a plate into one sort of even layer to help it cool. And then uh, we're going to take our vinegar, our sushi vinegar mixture, and we're going to sprinkle this over top. I'm going to go about a like a couple tablespoons worth because I made a little bit extra. You could, if you're following along the recipe, you could probably just use the exact amount that you made. And then we're going to sort of cut to mix it in. You want to, you don't really want to crush the rice. You want to sort of go in between the rice and fold it over top itself and mix it that way. And just give it a nice thorough mixing so you can start to see all of the uh, individual grains start to like glisten a little bit with some of the vinegar. Right, we can let this cool for a minute while we finish getting everything ready to make sushi. All right, so now that we've got everything all assembled to make our sushi, we can get our sushi making station all laid out. So I've got here a silicone mat. The easiest way to roll sushi is with a, a bamboo mat. It's got like little strips of bamboo joined or tied together with strings that you can roll up but stays rigid. But if you don't have one, um, this will work just fine. I've got this bamboo mat with some wax paper on it, or you could use like plastic wrap or what have you. And we're going to need some sushi nori, or uh, which is a dried seaweed to go around the outside of our sushi. We're going to take a sheet out. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this in half. Since we're only doing one type of filling, we're making what are known in Japanese as hosomaki, or like skinny rolls. Um, and they don't, since they only have one topping, so we can use half a sheet. All right, and right here I've got about a quarter cup of water and uh, about two teaspoons of rice vinegar to uh, make sort of a mixture to dip my hands in so that the rice, which should be pretty sticky, won't stick to my hands. So, I'm going to take a bit of rice, spread it out. You want the, I may have goofed this up already. Oops. Yep, hang on. Whoops. I need to practice my sushi rolling. Uh, but we want the shiny side to face down when we do these. So, take some sushi, maybe about a, a quarter to a half cup. We're going to spread it out across here. Be careful to get a sort of an even layer, but not to squish it. It's easy why it's helpful to have something here to dip your hands in to stop the rice from sticking. So you want to be on a pretty even layer. You want about a, a half inch or so to be bare at the bottom so you can seal this up without it overflowing. And then you're going to take some of your filling. So I'm going to start with some spicy tuna and just put a little down here. Sort of wet this sort of lip here. Make sure that hopefully it'll seal. And with the aid of our, oh, actually we want to start from the other side. With the aid of our thing, we can start to roll this up. And we want to, as you roll, you want to push down. Make sure that you're getting this nice and tight. You can see I sort of I overfilled this guy. So, let's give that one more shot, a little less. And so as you can see, rolling sushi is one of those things that just takes practice to really get the hang of. But, 
Once you've been doing it a few times, you can, whoops, shiny side down. Even like even less than I had before. Try to go as far out to the edge as you can, but leave that little spot, that little stripe at the bottom. All right, and then let's try this way with just a light, light amount of our filling. down a little and let's try it. Uh, whoops other way start from the full side and roll press and roll and press and there you go it's got some rice stuck to the outside from that first uh, mistake but we've got a stable sushi roll, so let me clean up a little here and let's try a cucumber roll. Alright, so we got our nori, we want the shiny side down, the duller side facing up. I'm gonna dip our hands, grab some soup, grab some rice, spread it nice and thin. And of course, you can make one ingredient sushi rolls with a full sheet of nori. I'll show you what that, how that comes out in just a sec here. Dog saw something, a reflection or a, a sparrow or something. And all right, so now we can nestle our ingredients in here. This kapamaki, this cucumber roll. And here. Actually, probably just the two. Flip this around, get this just a little bit wet on the end. We can even probably fill in a little more than that. I don't want to overstuff this guy. Okay. And then roll it up. You want to, if you've got something solid in there, you want to sort of tuck as you're rolling. So that it stays in the middle. Tuck and roll, tuck and roll. And then... Seal that down, hopefully. We'll make sure that's nice and tight. So we'll give that a sec to settle. And then, so if you wanted to do, say we wanted to combine our two, our cucumber and our spicy mayo. So we want shiny side down. We're gonna use quite a bit more rice. We just need to leave that one little strip. We still wanna keep it pretty nice and thin thin layer across here to make sure that we can close it properly. Right now, we can do a nice big dollop of our spicy tuna in here. We can 
make that with our cucumber pieces. I'll wet this down just a little. Roll it up. stuck to the outside because I haven't been great about cleaning this but it came out nice and consistent so then all that's left to do is slice these guys up and serve now cutting sushi can be kind of tricky um, so it's best to have a very sharp knife if you can like even more so than usual and what you probably want to do is try to do sort of a forward motion and go about halfway and then come back. So let's try. See, it's easy for them to unravel a bit as you do. And that's a little bit down to your cutting technique and a little bit down to your Sorry, to your uh, ability to your how you've made your sushi rolls, but we can sort of squish these guys back into shape. It can help sometimes to let them sit for a minute after you've made the roll, and let the nori hydrate some from the rice because that will um, make it a little easier to cut through. Also, what I should probably show you. <laughs> The easier way to do this, so you want to start, cut it in half first, and then go into thirds if you're looking for six. So here, here, okay. You go forward and then back. Forward and then back. take the same approach with this big one that we made. This is more of a what we would call a chumaki or a medium roll in Japanese. Um, so all covered in rice. Um, so we're going to go forward and back just like the others. Forward and back and then try to split into thirds roughly. Forward and back. Forward and back. Still making our claw shape like we like we like to do for safety when cutting. Right, and into thirds, like here and here. Right, so forward and back. And forward and back. You can see we've got these nice, perfectly pretty sushi in there. So there you have it. Uh, the easiest way I know of to make sushi at home. We did some nice simple recipes. We've got our kapamaki or cucumber roll, our spicy tuna roll, and a fusion spicy tuna cucumber roll. Um, I've also got some regular standard sushi accoutrement here. We've got wasabi, this sort of green paste here. Um, I could only find this powdered, but it's really simple to reconstitute. You just mix an equal amount of the powder and water. Um, it tastes a lot like horseradish. In fact, I think this just is powdered horseradish being sold as wasabi. It's very hard to get uh, authentic wasabi, but it'll give you about the same experience. So it's really hot and sort of the back of your throat. Um, so use sparingly, but it's a nice uh, accompaniment to all the other flavors in sushi. And some pickled ginger, um, which is usually sort of a palate cleanser thing. It's very like, I don't quite know how to describe the flavor of it. It's very, it's like strongly ginger flavored. It'll really sort of clean out uh, any other lingering flavors. And then a little bit of soy sauce for dipping. If you want, you could serve with a little more spicy mayo if you've still got some left over. And with all that said, nothing left to do but dig in. So as the Japanese would say, itadakimasu. Uh, which basically just means, it's sort of like saying grace. I'm thankful for the food, uh, basically. A little wasabi, dip, and soy sauce. 
so there you have it. Uh, two simple sushi recipes to try out. I hope you guys will try these, maybe experiment. You could do all kinds of things, throw in maybe some avocado or like some very thinly cut carrots, um, all sorts of stuff. If you do decide that you want to try raw fish, uh, which I would encourage because um, raw fish and sushi tastes great. It's very like clean and flavorful. Uh, make sure that you're getting it from uh, a fish seller that you trust. Make sure that it's sushi grade or maybe it might be sashimi grade. Um, however, they've put it so that it's safe for raw consumption because fish can have all kinds of parasites and things and you don't want to get sick. So, uh, but as long as you're doing that, I say go for it. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, so if you have any other suggestions for things that you'd like to see featured on this show, uh, leave us a comment down below and maybe we'll get to them next time. And until then, I've been Ben from the Merrimack Public Library. See ya.